video Cable Melting Saga gets more info and more confusing. AMD invents a backronym and they're getting aggressive with their 9000 series. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. This Wednesday, February 12th, 2025. And we're gonna start off today with talking about a video that went out right before hot news did. So there's a lot more information that came out with regards to the video that we published, but just because of our release cadence, I couldn't actually include it. However, I do have more data beyond Der Bauer's video about the RTX 5090 cable that he was able to investigate. So there's some good information in this video. I absolutely encourage you to check out Der Bauer's video on it because he's going to go through in more detail than I will here in this video. We have it linked in the description. However, the TLDW is that he got the cable and the card of the person who had the melted 5090 Founders Edition because they live in Germany, very close to him. And it appears that the cable had similar issues to the one that he is having on his Founders Edition, where one of the cables on the 12 volt high power connector is getting way too much juice. Getting 20 plus amps of power resulting in 150 degrees Celsius, at least in Der Bauer's testing. We don't know how hot it got on the GPU that inevitably died. Meaning with this uneven distribution of the amp resulting in potentially these melted cables with the damage being done on the power supply side, the cable side, and the GPU side. This was a third party cable, however, in his analysis, he doesn't believe that it should be a problem with that and that this will just happen because the cable is just gonna have too much distribution going on, especially with Founders Editions, because allegedly they don't have the proper setup to evenly distribute the load in all cases, which can mean that when it gets up to 20 20 amps, it doesn't have a way to detect that. It's only seeing that it's receiving the proper amount of amperage, not that the load is being carried on a single cable, whereas third party cards might have a better time because they have ways to detect the uneven distribution of the power that's going into the cards. But this resulted in a lot of other people testing the amperages on their cables, with many people finding that their 5090s and their 4090s have plenty evenly distributed amperage and heat on their cables getting nowhere near to what Der Bauer had. Multiple tech outlets reporting that they are not having similar issues. And so it doesn't appear to be that it's always gonna happen in every instance with every cable, with every card. And it's not clear right now what caused it to happen to the card that did get burnt. What's causing it to happen with Der Bauer's card because it's not user error. It's not him not properly inserting the cables. It instead has to be something else, but it's not consistently happening across across all cards, all cables in all scenarios. So we actually don't know the bottom of this at the current moment. What is yielding this result where we're getting uneven amperage distribution across one cable in certain instances, not others? What's the catalyst? What's the driving force? What's going on here? We're not quite sure, but what we are sure of is that it's happening because they're trying to push too much power over a very limited amount of space and they don't have a ton of headroom with the actual power distribution. The cables are 600 watt cables. Technically, they're rated for 660 watts on a 575 watt card. They have very limited headroom. But now we found out that in prototype versions of the 4090 and 5090, Nvidia tried a different approach of giving it multiple 16 pin power connectors. Now, theoretically, this could lead to less melting because you're getting less power distributed over one single cable, and instead it can go across multiple 16-pin power connectors. And this is one of the reasons why we're not seeing melting happening on the 5080 or the 4080. It just didn't happen because the power that's going over those cables is less than it is on the 90 class. So if you reduce the amount of power that each cable is carrying, you're gonna have less melting issues. So it's clear based on these prototype cards that Nvidia thought about it. Nvidia made a card that could do it. They just didn't release it that way. And instead they came out and said that they believe that the melting connector issue was gonna be fixed and that they hope that it's not gonna be a problem. And now we're sitting here in February realizing, oh no, it still is, it still is. We're not to the bottom of it yet. There's been helpful analysis. We see what is happening. They're getting too hot and they're melting, but we, again, still in a position where we don't know why, we don't know specifically what is causing this to happen. Is there a difference between the 12 volt high power connector and the 12 volt two by six? Theoretically, there shouldn't be, but we're also seeing that people who have the two by six aren't having that issue. And some of these cables that are having the issues are the older 12 volt high power, not the two by six, even though theoretically it shouldn't make a difference. We don't have reports currently that I'm aware of, of the two 
two by six connectors melting. So we need more data, we need more time. Hopefully we'll figure it out. And AMD has figured out that uh, their GRE graphics cards, which originally stood for Golden Rabbit Edition, because originally these cards were China only exclusive GPUs that were released in the year of the rabbit. So they were called the GRE. Well, we're no longer in the year of the rabbit. We were in the year of the dragon last year. Now we're in the year of the snake, but they're not changing the naming scheme. Instead, they're backronymizing the name, calling it the Great Radeon Edition, because it works. It makes sense. I mean, the GREs have been exceptionally good value. They stopped being China only exclusives. We had the 7900 GRE get released here locally in the States, which delocalized the card, making it so that it doesn't have to appeal to that. And so now you'll be able to buy the AMD Radeon RX 7650 Great Radeon Edition card. Have fun with that. And have fun with Reese. He's gonna save me some money on tech stuff. Yo, welcome back to Yifty Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. And because this is what we do here, I'll jump straight into it with this Corsair AF120 RGB Slim Fan Kit. Featuring two fans for only $27.99, making it $43 off. This is perfect if you have a smaller system and an AIO and you're running out of space, so uh, hey. But then carrying on with the Corsair train, we have this Vengeance RGB DDR5 RAM kit. Featuring 32 gigs at 6,000 megahertz at CL36 for only $89.99, with included promo code making it $20 off. And then lastly today we have the Superflower LED X7 XG 850 watt 80 plus gold fully modular power supply available in white for only $139.99 with included promo code making it $50 off. And hey with that the deals are done you can find these and more linked in the video description down below but until next time I'm gonna hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, you're gonna need some uh, deals and savings in order to afford the RTX 50 series laptops that we now know are gonna be launching with OEMs on February 25th. In less than two weeks, you're gonna be able to get 50, 80, 50, 90 GPUs from these companies. It's gonna be expensive, but theoretically, no melting power connectors with these bad boys advantage. And AMD wants to have an advantage with their RX 9000 series GPUs. And now we're getting reports coming out that AMD does plan to be aggressive, BE aggressive with their 9070 series, making it so that they're very competitive with AMD, especially because things like the RX 7000 series did not sell as well as AMD probably wanted it to. They lost market share as one of their weakest launches in decades. They just didn't hit the market with the 7900 XTX, despite the great value it provided versus the RTX 4080 or even the 4070 Ti, people just weren't gobbling it up. People were gobbling up the 4090s. So according to this, AMD is planning to actually discontinue their 7800 XT because it's going to be in that price point that will make it competitive with the 9070 and 9070 XT, which is in that roughly $450 to $600 price category, which is allegedly the aggressive price point that the 90 70 series is supposed to be coming in at. I just don't think that that's very aggressive. That just seems equally competitive. If the 9070 XT is equally priced to the 5070 class card, I think they have to provide 5080 level performance at that price point to get people to switch over to them. I know it's, it sounds unfair. AMD has to deliver more for less money, but that appears to be the reality of the market that we live in. Even though the RX 7000 series, in my opinion, was a great value. You got a lot of actual GPU heart horsepower for the price. 7800 XT, 7900 GRE, and 7900 XTX were phenomenally priced against their NVIDIA counterparts. They weren't enough. The launch was weak. People didn't buy them. They went with the 40 series. So if AMD wants to make some headroom in market share, I think they're gonna have to do a little bit better than just giving you 5070 Ti level performance at 5070 pricing. Because inevitably, the arguments will come up in forums and with people discussing which GPU should I buy. AMD, uh, why would I get them when you have FSR 4 in multi-frame gen supported in hundreds of games? A NVIDIA has way better software support. AMD has driver problems. Those arguments will be perpetuated, even though it doesn't matter to most people. Most people probably won't turn on multi-frame gen. Most people probably want to avoid ray tracing because of the FPS hit. And so the, the added intangibles that NVIDIA has in certain ways are just going to become conversation points and might lead to a similar situation where market share stays in favor of 90% team green. And let's see what the market share of the comments yesterday was. It was a lot of people telling me about Der Bauer's video. Our release schedule didn't allow for me to cover it. I already mentioned that at the beginning of Hot News. If there's breaking news that happens, 
that's outside of my work time. I'm just not gonna be able to cover it until the next episode, like you see here. I uh, I don't work overtime very much anymore because uh, I'm focusing on my family and not uh, trying to be the breaking news person. It's not really the vibe that I wanna go for here on Hot News, but we got Coplaner saying, imagine buying a Scout $4,000 5090 and it breaks like this. No, I'm not gonna imagine that. I don't wanna live in that reality. Thank you. And then Nez saying 4090 melting with 450 watts, 5090 supposed to not melt at 600 watts. Yeah, my butt. Um, yeah, that's what they said. They changed the connector. It's more snug, fits harder on the 5090 and 5080 founders edition. It's uh, very tough to plug that thing in, but uh, yeah, still problematic. And then Sagrum saying a company, it's secret. You can't tell private information, UFD. I missed the part where that's my problem. And then some people just kind of commenting down below. Uh, th there's the old, this is off the record, but I don't think it has anything making it legally binding. Reporters generally observe this as they don't want to burn contacts who give them information because this is how you lose contacts. And then Toad saying, it's just a threat saying, if you tell people about this, we will not work with you anymore. I mean, honestly, the, the contact that I'm potentially burning here, if it does happen. Number one, I built this entire channel without working with them. Uh, I think we started working with them like about a year ago. So we're like, it's, I have nine years of history without them. We'll get by just fine without them. Additionally, um, you know, I tried to, I hid the source, didn't say uh, which company it was, tried to obfuscate at least some data there, uh, but I think it's relevant to the consumer. And you know, they're not really giving me behind the scenes information anyways. They're just coming out whenever they, they hear something that I said that they didn't like. They, they're trying to like fact check me in emails, which I, I get is like a PR strategy, but it also like when it's, uh, hey, here's this thing that if we told the consumer uh, would be good for a brand image, but you're not allowed to tell them, it just, it raises red flags. Why is this the case? You know, I could ask them directly, but likely what I would get is some PR answer that doesn't actually answer the question that I'm directly asking, wanting to know, hey, what exactly is going on here? And so instead, you know, we'll, we'll just continue to do things the way we've always done it here at UFD. If a company wants me to do something that I, I don't agree with, not gonna go along with it. I saw one comment saying, oh, it's nice that Brett uh, UFD Tech's big enough that they can tell companies to do this. And the truth is I've been doing this since the very beginning. Uh, the channel's upbringings in South Africa, working with the local branches of MSI, ASUS, AMD, they all had ways of doing things that were very sketchy. I kind of matured this channel in an environment where I always kind of stood my ground and always told them, hey, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do things your way because they're broken and weird and unethical and problematic for, for a lot of people, even though you don't see a problem with it. And uh, you know, that got me to be a pariah in the industry a little bit. And uh, if it makes me a pariah here with the US branch, I'll just buy their cards retail. I don't need them to send me review samples. But then, you know, I, on the same token, companies that uh, hear me say this kind of stuff and then continue to work with me, those are the ones that I respect the most because they understand what we're about they understand I'm not gonna pull punches. You know, it's it's one of the reasons why um, I, I have still continued to work with Intel as a sponsor on a lot of our content, whether that's our uh, CES or Computex strips, or potentially when they're coming out with various products, you know, we'll take their sponsorship in a lot of scenarios. If number one, uh, their product isn't problematic, like it has been in certain scenarios, but two, because uh, you know, I, we've had our disagreements. I, I have not shied away from crapping on Intel in our videos, and yet they come back and they say, hey, we heard what you had to say. You know, we disagree with some of it here and there, but uh, we respect you, we wanna work with you, and uh, you know, here you go. And so th those are the companies I wanna work with that can, uh, that can take me saying, hey, you're screwing up, you're doing bad things, you're doing things that are anti-consumer, and we don't like it. And for, for all the problems Intel has, uh, for all of the uh, bad decisions and difficulties that they have had, um, they have continued to say, hey, we, we like you, we like your work, we're not gonna ask you to change, we just wanna support you. And then we got the Palin boy saying, be me, regret buying into 11th gen Intel right before the next gen drops, 12th to 14th gen Intel is killing themselves on default settings. It was 13th to 14th, 12th wasn't included in that. Buys the 3090 right before 40 series drop, 40 and 50 series has a melting problem, regret gone. I mean, the 30 series, the 39 is a great card. You shouldn't have regret even, they didn't melt. 11th gen Intel, maybe some regret because that was a weird generation, right? The i9 10850K, 
was basically everything you needed and the 11900K wasn't anything more, hardly. I would still have regrets about the 11th gen because I'd go with 10th gen, but uh, 3090, nothing to, to regret there. And then we got a couple people saying uh, Zotax method is uh, seems pretty okay, definitely better than some others, but then also saying this is so weird. You gotta be a member of a Discord to get the chance to spend two and a half to three thousand dollars on a GPU that might melt if you look at it the wrong way. Crazy times. Sure is. It's time to end this episode of Hot News. I'll see you back here for more of the Hot Tech News tomorrow.